Today we're going to look at Levi. Mark chapter 2. We're going to look at the man named Levi. Mark chapter 2, verse 14. We need, we're going to, and we need today to look at the details of what we're reading. We just can't skim through it. And as he, Jesus, passed by, he saw Levi, there he is, the son of Alphaeus. So Levi is the son of Alphaeus. Alphaeus is the dad. Sitting at the receipt of custom, tax collector. He's a tax collector. And they were positioned at the gates of the city, public highways, and any other ex extra place that would be helpful and mindful for the government to collect revenue. And said unto him, Levi, follow me. And he arose and followed him. Okay. So Levi is called by Jesus. Like Peter and Andrew come. And he follows. Staying with the context we, we study. Like Andrew. And it doesn't say... <coughs> I'll make thee fishers of men. Because that's not Levi's occupation. Because Andrew was a fisherman. Levi is a tax collector. Now, the title of this is called Levi 2. See, so, what on earth? Well, if we go to Genesis 29... Genesis 29. You'll find that this is the first Levi. Genesis 9. Yeah. Genesis 29, 34. In Genesis 29, 34, it says, She conceived again, Leah, Jacob's wife, and bare a son, and said, Because the Lord has heard that I was hated. He therefore has given a son also, and shall call his name Simeon. And she conceived again, had a son, and now this time will my son, I mean, will my son, yeah, excuse me. This time will my husband be joined unto me, because I have borne him three sons. Therefore was his name called Levi. So Levi, in the context of the scripture, is named for the word joined. And what Leah is saying, listen, Jacob really didn't, didn't love her. But he has taken her. And he's producing children with her. And Leah's hopes for she loved Jacob is this son that I have named Levi. He, Jacob, my husband, will be with me now and forever to death to his part. And it doesn't happen. But the name Levi, the Hebrew name, means joint. So the man we're looking at today as a name joint. 
Okay. Matthew 9. Matthew 9. Matthew chapter 9. Verse number 9. And as Jesus passed forth from thence, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the receipt of customs. We saw that in Mark. And he says unto him, follow me. We saw that in Mark. And he arose and followed him. All right, Matthew, who is the subject today, Matthew, gives the place of his name, a, a, a name that goes back to the exile time. Of Israel. A Greekish name. That Matthew. Retains. In his introduction. To the ministry of Jesus Christ. And it follows everything. To the letter T. Except one place says Matthew. One place says Levi. So when we look at all the scripture, we look at Luke chapter 5. See, why do we keep going back and forth, back and Because I want you to see the full picture. I don't want you to say, well, look at that. Styley didn't do this first. What's he hiding? You know what I mean? So Luke chapter 5, 27. After you things, he went forth, saw a publican. Now tax collectors are called publicans. And they're not a very nice group of people. And usually you'll find them in the, in the Bible, the sinners and the publicans. The publicans and, and the sinners. That title goes with a revenue officer, publican. So you see with Mark, you see with Matthew, and you see with Luke, we draw in a complete er picture of the life of Jesus. Named Levi, Mark, sitting at the receipt of customs, Luke, Mark and Matthew. And he said unto him, follow me. And he rose up and followed him. Mark, Matthew, and Luke. So, what we have is Levi is a Hebrew name, again, meant Joined. Matthew is retained and is gift of God. A gift of God. Well, Matthew will write to us a gospel of Jesus Christ. The Jewish king. The gift of God. To Israel. So. With that. We know more. Luke 5.29. Luke 529, again, we're paying attention to detail. Levi, 
made a great feast in his own house. And there was a great company of publicans, tax collectors, friends of his, and others that sat down with them. There was a great multitude of people, accountants and tax collectors and revenue keepers, at Levi's house. <clears throat> you know what Levi's doing? He's calling all his friends, all his, all his co cohorts, all his people of business, everything he, he's dealt with, his known associates, he's called them to a feast at his house to introduce them to Jesus. But, the, but their scribes and the Pharisees, the religious group, murmured against his disciples, Jesus, saying, what do you eat and drink with publicans and sinners? There you go. What are you doing with these low lives? What are you doing with them people? A little prejudice. Jesus answered said unto him, They that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. So, if I can say it, let me say it. Just a description. According to the scribes and the Pharisees, Jesus is having a meal with the scum of the earth. And in actuality, Jesus is having a meal with a bunch of revenue collectors, with a bunch of tax people and accountants. And everybody that would be associated with that office of precision. Now, usually, for the taxation of the Hebrews, to raise not a ruckus, the Romans would bring a Hebrew, a Jewish man, to be the tax collector. Because if you're going to hate somebody collecting taxes, well, don't hate a Roman. Hate your own. By the way, the law prescribed for the Jew, you're to love your neighbor. And you're not to hate, to, to hate him. That was in the law. And the Pharisees and scribes, of course, they are in violation of the law of their attitude to these people of publicans and sinners at this house, at this dinner, which they're probably 99% of them are Hebrews. I don't know how Matthew would invite Gentiles, maybe a few of them, but Hebrews. And the religious people have got their nose stuck up in the air. So, detail that. Let's turn to Matthew 9. Matthew 9. Ten. Now Matthew nine nine. <clears throat> Excuse me. Matthew has followed Jesus. Nine ten. And it came to pass as Jesus sat at meat. Luke. In the house. Well, what house? What's the context? Verse 9. Levi. Matthew. Behold many publicans. There's the tax collector. And sinners. Came and sat down 
with him and his disciples. Okay? We've already talked about this in Luke. When the Pharisees saw, there they are, when they saw it, they said unto his disciples, Luke, why eateth your master with publicans and sinners? There it is again. But when Jesus heard that, he said unto them, They that behold need not a physician, but they that are sick. There's the same thing you read in Luke. Luke says Levi. Matthew says Matthew. They both have a feast. They're both the same. First, he just has another name. Everybody calls him Levi, but he calls himself Matthew. There's no trouble with the scriptures. I, I, I go through some names and I look at, and you know, the guy's name Robert, he wants to be called Bob. There's a, you know, Big Jake, a grandpa, AC Doocy. You know what? They, they got nicknames for themselves. I used to know a lot of bikers. They've had nicknames. People, people who play sports, they've got nicknames. Listen, you associate yourself with people who have nicknames, who have themselves called by other names and their given name, and you will allow that. But you will thumb your nose. At God's holy word. That, my friend, is ridiculous. So, Matthew 10. Verse 1. Twelve disciples. Okay. Verse 2. The apostles are these. Verse 3. Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas, we did that the other day, Matthew the publican, James the son of Alphaeus. That is Alphaeus. We already read that Matthew, Levi, is the son of Alphaeus, and we read that James also is the son of Alphaeus. Same man, same father. Are these two brothers? We don't know. Could they be brothers? Well, Peter and Andrew were brothers. James and John were brothers. Uh, was it Thomas? His name meant tw uh, twin. Now, I'm not going to say that James and Matthew are brothers. What I'm going to say is I'll leave that possibility. And then when we meet James and Matthew in heaven, If it's really a big deal, we can ask them. I don't think it would be really that big of a deal. I don't think I would go to hell to tell you that they could be brothers. I don't think I will lose rewards if I would say I don't think they're brothers. I just want you to save. That both James and Matthew's father's name is Labidius, however you say it. Again, keep your place there. Look at Mark. Look at Mark chapter 2. Mark chapter 2. 
Verse 14. And as they passed by the sea, he saw Levi, the son of Eliphaz. And my friend, I'm looking at both words right now. And they're spelt the same. You say, well, the scripture, the Holy Spirit, really doesn't give us that lead. There is a reason. What is it? I don't know. I don't have all the answers. Don't come listening to these videos and that, you know, he's going to have all the answers. I am not. You're going to be shocked to realize that many times I am going to say, I don't know. So he's a disciple. He is an apostle. Look at Mark 3. We're going to all the scriptures. Mark chapter 3. So we don't miss it. I say you get stuck. Mark 3, 18. Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, and James, the son of Alphaeus. Now, now you will say James the less. Okay. Verse 14, they are the 12. Verse 19, Judas is part of them. Luke 6. And it's interesting, we are not, or there, nor is there any reference in the Gospel of John. I don't know why. Luke chapter 6. Okay. Verse 15. They're called disciples. There's 12 of them. 6.15. Matthew. There he is. Thomas. James, the son of Alphaeus. You know, we're called, he's called... Matthew, the publican. We haven't seen Matthew or Levi as a disciple, the son of Alphaeus. Okay. Acts 1. We saw this before. Acts chapter 1. Thirteen. When they were come up to the went up to the upper room where both Peter, and James, and John, and Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew. Funny, James the son of Alphaeus. There he is. He's in the upper room after the resurrection of Jesus. After the resurrection of Jesus, Judas falls away, but not Matthew, not Andrew, not Thomas. Matthew was there the Last Supper. Matthew was there the Lord's Supper. When the Lord handed the cup and handed the bread, said, this is my body, take and eat. And this is my blood. Take and drink. Matthew had the last dinner of Jesus Christ on this earth. Matthew 
who we're talking about tonight, Levi, the tax collector, the scum of the Pharisee, took part in something that happens at the own discretion of the Baptist churches, the Lord's Supper. And he done it with the Lord Jesus Christ. Friend, I have never had a physical meal with Jesus. Friend, when my church partakes of the Lord's Supper, I'll partake of it, but I am not having the bread that Jesus held with his hands. I'm not holding the cup that Jesus held. As far as our study, Mark, Thomas, and Matthew did. Matthew 22. Matthew 22. Matthew 22, 21. Jesus answered, said unto them, Verily I say unto you, It's not done at all. 22 11. I don't know either. Am I in 22? No, I'm not in 22. It's my fault. I only get where you're supposed to be. 22 21. They said unto him, Caesar's. Then said he unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God. If it belongs to Caesar, give it to him. If it belongs to God, give it to him. Okay? Let's verify it. Mark 12. So if I can mess up being in the wrong place in the scriptures. I make mistakes. Mark chapter 12, 17. Jesus answered and said unto them, Render to Caesar the things that are Caesar. There it is again. And to God the things that are God. And they marveled at him. Okay? You see, the publicans, the revenue officers, the tax collectors were hated. And they were Jewish and violated the law of loving your neighbor. And they were hating the person because of its position. And do you think every used car salesman is a crook, does his job dishonestly? Everyone. 100%. I doubt it. I'm not going to say every tax collector is crook. I'm not going to say every politician is crook. I'll say very close on that one. You can't swim in the sewer and not any any onion. And Jesus, in the gospel, out of his mouth, with his tax collector disciple, his tax revenue apostle, being there says if it belongs to Caesar, give to Caesar. That was that was Matthew's job. If it belongs to God, give it to God. 
So if even Matthew worked for the priests in their taxes, Matthew's job or the tax, tax, yeah, tax collector's job, if it played both sides of the field, would be all right, agents of Rome and their and their tax pay, said Jesus. If you're agents of the Jewish religious hierarchy, you're to pay that in the name of God also. And remember, we got the story of, of Peter going and catching the fish and the coin in the mouth of that fish. That coin was used by Jesus to voluntarily pay taxes so no one got offended. You know, my friend, anybody who doesn't pay taxes, I'm offended. I don't cheat my IRS. I do it honestly. It's like, as much as I, I believe it is honest, I do it honestly. Romans 13. See, why, why are you bringing this up? Because we're talking about the tax collector. We're talking about many Christians hate taxes. I just told you what Jesus said about taxes. If it belongs to the government, you give it to the government. Paul, writing to the church in Rome, Romans 13, let every soul save the Lord. Be subject unto the higher powers, God, judges, presidents, kings, mayors. For there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. So you don't like the president of the United States. That, that's a tough cookie. Because God ordained that man into office. Well, no, no, I don't care about blah, 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 blah. Keep your tongue inside your mouth. No matter who is in the Oval Office, that man needs prayer from time to time. That man needs Jesus as his Savior. Whosoever therefore resists the power, resists the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. All right, if you break the law, you break what, what the Holy Spirit is telling Paul to write right now, you're not supposed to, to rebel against the powers of your government. Whoever and whatever they are for office. You're in violation. Verse six. For they cause for uh, for this cause pay ye tribute. That's a tax. Look at verse 7. Render therefore to all their dues. Tribute to whom tribute is due. Custom to custom. That would have been Matthew's job.
the New Testament on this side of Calvary, you are by God Stop complaining about your taxes and pay them. Stop complaining about who is the president and pray for them. That plain and simple. 